Hi everybody, today on Rachel Cooks with Love, I'm gonna show you how I make my delicious Dutch oven pot roast. It's a simple recipe, but it's loaded with flavor. And it's also one of my favorite comfort food. Let's get started. So I've got a beautiful chuck roast right here, and it's three and a half pounds. This is my favorite cut of meat for braising. When I'm gonna make a pot roast, I always pick a chuck roast. Now, as you can see, it's got beautiful marbling on it. And that's what you want when you're gonna make a chuck roast because all that marbling is gonna give you a fantastic taste. Now, when I'm gonna make a pot roast, I like to pick a nice big cut of meat because I'm gonna use it for other meals throughout the week. I can make other things with it. So before I sear my meat, I'm gonna go ahead and season it really well. Now I've got some kosher salt here and you want to salt it really good because it is a big piece of meat. So you wanna make sure that you use, you know, plenty of salt like that. And I like to rub it in really good. And I went ahead and patted it dry real good before you get started because you want everything to stick on it pretty good. Now I'm gonna put in my pepper. This is freshly ground pepper. So you wanna get the sides also, see? Flip it over and do the same thing. Now my garlic powder. And you know, when I make a pot roast, as I was saying, you know, with the leftovers, I'm able to make some chimichangas, I can make some tacos, I make some burritos, you know. There's just so many things you can make with it. So it's not like it's gonna be a pot roast and that's it. You can do other things with it too. So that's why I like to pick a big piece of meat like this. And I think this is good. So you know that when you season really well with your garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, you're gonna get a fantastic tasting pot roast. So we've got plenty of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dust it with flour. Just gonna put some flour right here on this plate and I'm gonna get my chuck roast and I'm gonna flour it really good. So I like to push it down, make sure that it gets real good into the cracks, just like this. And I also wanna get the sides, see? Now this is what's gonna give you a fantastic crust and it's gonna be the best gravy you've ever had. See? So now I'm gonna go ahead and sear it. So let's go to the stove. So I've got my stove setting on low and as you can see, I've got a small saucepan here. And in here, I've got some frozen chicken stock, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here and let it simmer on low until I need it. Because that's what I'm gonna be using. So I've set my heat on medium high. Now you don't want it too low. You want it on medium high to get a good sear. I'm gonna be using this heavy duty Dutch oven. This is my big old faithful and I usually bring her out only when I'm gonna make something big that I need plenty of room in. And I think that cast iron, a big pot like this Dutch oven is perfect for a pot roast. So I've got about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. And I also have a tablespoon of bacon grease. Now this is, this is bacon grease that I got from this morning. And I just think that the bacon grease gives it a delicious flavor. And I want it in here when I make a pot roast. So now I have my meat over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the pot. Just like that. I'm gonna push it down, make sure that it's sealed really well from the bottom like this to get a good sear on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my rope over. Just like that. Now I'm gonna push it down. Make sure that it's all sealed at the bottom. And I'm also gonna sear this side. So it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up carefully. This is a big piece of meat. 
So I'll just hold it up like this until this bottom part sears. And then I'll be turning it around. So I've gotten all the sides nice and seared. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm just going to put it right here on this plate. And I'm going to set it aside and get my veggies ready to put in my pot. So I've lowered my temperature down to medium. Now that I have removed my roast, I still have a little bit of grease in there. But if you feel that you need to add some, you can go ahead and add a little bit. Now I've got one whole onion. Now I didn't cut it into small pieces because I will be removing it later. Right now I just want to get the flavor out of that onion. And I also have one carrot and one celery rib right here. I've just cut them into small pieces. Now I will be removing these later, like I said. So I'm going to be moving them around like this, just until the onions get a little translucent. If I were to put all my vegetables in here that I'm going to be using in my pot roast, by the time my pot roast will be ready, all these vegetables will be real mushy. So I will be removing these later and then adding the vegetables that I will be having for the end. So I've got three big garlic cloves, you see. I'm going to mash them because these are the ones that I'm going to be putting into my pot. Just like that, see. So these will be next. So as you can see, my onions have gotten a little translucent. I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. Now I've got two big sprigs of rosemary right here. I'm going to go ahead and add them in there. And I've also got two of thyme. And I'm going to put them in there. And I'm going to move them around so that my garlic can release its flavor in there. And the rosemary and the thyme as well. Now you don't want to burn your garlic. That's the worst thing you can do for your pot roast. So I'm just going to be moving them around like this for about one minute. So it's almost one minute. I'm going to dust a little bit of flour in here. See? And I'm going to be moving it around like this until it gets nice and toasty. Ooh, this rosemary and thyme smell wonderful in here. Yummy. Okay. You don't want raw flour. Now this flour is what's going to give us our beautiful gravy. But you don't want it raw. So you want to move it around until it gets nice and toasty. And at the same time, the rosemary and the thyme are down at the bottom. And they are also releasing their flavor. Which is exactly what we want. See? Now I'm going to go ahead and add my tomato paste. I like the tomato paste because it gives it a wonderful taste and it also gives it good color. Now I have one cup of beef broth. I'm going to go ahead and add it in here. And I'm also going to add chicken stock. As you can see, it's ready to go just like that. So you want to put in about a cup to a cup and a half. It doesn't matter. Even two cups is fine. I think this will work. If I need some more, I will add some more. Now I've also got one teaspoon of red wine vinegar. I'm going to go ahead and add it in there. It's acidic and I like it in there. And this will help deglaze the bottom. Now that I put in my chicken stock, I'm going to go ahead and add my crushed tomatoes. I've got one cup of fresh canned tomatoes. I'm going to give it a nice stir. I like the tomatoes in here because it gives it a fantastic flavor and it also gives it a beautiful color along with a tomato paste. See? Now as you can see, all our goodness has come up to a light boil. See? Oh my gosh, it smells beautiful in here. Now I've got two small bay leaves. I'm going to go ahead and dump them in there. If you have a big one, you can put in one big one. Now I'm going to put my roast back in. Just like this. See? And that's about as deep as you want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my heat. And now I'm going to put it into the oven. 
Now I've got my oven set at 325 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the middle rack in the center of the oven and I'm gonna let it stay in there for about an hour and a half and then I'll see you then. So while my pot roast is still in the oven, I'm gonna get my vegetables ready, but I wanted to show you my dinner rolls. See? You're pretty? Mmm. I'm gonna get a video out for you on those dinner rolls. They're so easy to make. Now I've got a nice big size onion. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. Just like this. And then I'm just gonna cut them like this, like in big slices. And I'm gonna put them in my bowl. Now the other vegetables that are in the Dutch oven are gonna come out. I'm not gonna use those because they're probably pretty mushy by now but they have released their flavor, so that's what we want, okay? So here are all my onions. And next, I'm gonna peel my carrots. I'm not gonna cut them into small pieces. I like them a good size, about like this. See? Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same to all the carrots. Now, I also have two celery ribs. I'm also gonna cut these in, you know, pretty good sized pieces like this. I like them, you know, big and chunky, but you can put them in any size that you want, see? So here are all my veggies. I'm not gonna put any potatoes in with my pot rolls because I'm gonna make mashed potatoes. My Ron would rather have mashed potatoes than potatoes in the rolls. But you can put your potatoes in there and you can use either the little gold ones, you can use the red ones or the little dark purple or the little dark ones. It's just whatever you like. But I will be making mashed potatoes. So here's my Dutch oven. It's been an hour and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid. Ooh, look at how beautiful that looks. Now, before I remove these old vegetables that are in there, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the grease that has accumulated on top. And it's easy to go in there and just skim it off. Just like this, see? So now I'm going to go ahead and get my roast out for just a little bit. Like this. See? Now I'm going to use this skimmer. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the old vegetables that are inside my Dutch oven. I'm sure they taste delicious and I'm not going to throw them away, but I don't want them in there. All I want is the gravy. So you don't want all that in there. See the beautiful gravy? Now if you want it a little bit darker, and I do, I'm gonna add just a pinch of this kitchen bouquet. It's a browning and seasoning sauce. It doesn't change, you know, the taste much, but it does add a pretty color. So I'm gonna put in like half a teaspoon. This is half a teaspoon right there. Then I'm just gonna stir it in there. And can you see how it's getting darker? That's gonna be beautiful. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and put my roast back in. Oh, there we go. I think I'll dump all the good stuff in there. This looks good. Oh, look at that. See? Now I've got my vegetables that I cut up a little while ago, and I'm gonna go ahead and place them in there. The onions, the carrots. See? Mm. I'm gonna lift my roast, just let it sink in because you don't want it resting right on the bottom floor. Oh, and that's beautiful. Look at that. 
I want the onions and the carrots and all that to be in between the Dutch oven and my pot roast. So once I replace my lid, it's gonna get so nice and hot in there that these vegetables that are on top will cook beautifully, just like the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into the oven and I will check it in about one hour and make sure that my vegetables are tender. If they're not really tender, I'll leave them in there just a little longer until they're ready. And I'll see you then. My timer just went off. Look at this beautiful pot roast. I can't wait to see how tender it is. Everything is nice and ready. Got my mashed potatoes. You know this is going to be my Ron's plate, right? Put some of the gravy up here. See? See, that's why he likes the mashed potatoes, because of the gravy. So now we're going to get us some of this. See if I can do it with my fork. Let me get these tongs right here. Mmm, I almost forgot my fluffy dinner rolls. Mmm, look at that. Mm. Now let's do a taste test. Mmm, together with the mashed potatoes. Mmm. Mm. This is going to make fantastic leftovers. I can already see a big fat sandwich made out of this. So this is my delicious Dutch oven pot roast. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed, please do, and send me a comment and tell me what you think. Thank you.